continuous service. Welcome back to the Tell Me About Midlands 103 podcast. I'm Sarah Cassidy and this is the podcast where you get to find out all about the inner workings of the radio station and who some of the people are behind the voices and in the background. Today we will be taking a trip through the years of Midlands 103, what changes have there been and how the station has evolved. Four people who have seen this all happen is Director of Operations Rebecca Donnelly, the wonderful Nellie Duncan, presenter Des Doyle and Carl James. So... I know we were just talking about it before I turned up the mics, but how long have we all worked here? Are you going from the oldest? The longest, not Sorry, the oldest. The longest, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the oh, longest serving. So, Nelly? Uh, it was 27 years here on the 16th of October last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm 26 last September, so I'll be coming 27th this September. Yeah, yeah I'm 26 years at the end yeah. of September last year. Yeah. Oh, now, wow. I didn't check, but I think I'm 19 years around now. Oh, wow. So we were all teenagers yeah. when we started. Mm. Yes. <laughs> From me. And some, some of you babies not even, yeah. <laughs> not even meant to be working at the time. So it's one of those things where you immediately feel part of the family here when you start working here. And we, we have talked about that in, in other episodes of this. But Rebecca, why do you think people like yourself do stay so long at Midlands 103? Well, I think it's probably the people within the radio station. Um, I suppose I started part time, then I went full time, and obviously progressed in different roles in the station. I think it's the people who are in the station have allowed other people to come in, to develop, to grow, and obviously what they've started out as may not be where they are right now. So as I said, I was on the phones, but I'm operations director now, and I think yeah, I think that's pretty much why it's it's the people within the radio station. I think that's the thing, everyone's really friendly, aren't they? And Des, you have been on Midlands 103 for, you know, a few years. What has been your favourite thing about being part of the on-air team? Well, first of all, I, I hardly see anyone. That's, uh, people talk about the team on a Sunday morning. The team is <laughs> Nelly and myself, <laughs> no one else. So I, I, I rarely see people from the from the, the radio station, uh, as, apart from, say, coming in like, like something like this today. Um, why do I like it and what do I get out of it? It's, uh, the, it's all to do with the audience. I, I, I think it's, a, it's a, a privilege to be on air. I should say I get paid for it also. <laughs> so that's, that's important. <laughs> uh, I won't do it for nothing. But um, I'm probably the only guy who would get up at, at say, half past seven on a Sunday morning and come in here. Uh, the, the rest of them are all lying in their beds. And so that's one thing. The, uh, the other thing is that you're, I'm always conscious of the fact that you're a guest in people's houses. Yeah. Especially, say, on a Sunday morning where people are sitting back, relaxing, and doing all, you know, all, all sorts of things around the house. <coughs> and you're the, the guy in the corner in that <laughs> box. And that's a, that's, that's a privilege. And I remember one time I met this lady, and this has gone back now, very early in, in my career. And she stopped me and said, are you Des Doyle? And I said, yes. And she says, well, I want you to know that I listen to you every Sunday morning. And my husband died six years ago. And you're my companion for those three hours. Oh. And that's I never, I never forgot that, that people are sitting at home, perhaps on their own, and they're listening to the music and and you're their companion for that time. Because it is just talking to that one person, isn't it? Even though we always have, you know, we have lots of people that listen. It, you're really just talking to that one person. And that's and that's always quite powerful, I think. Um, Nelly, 26 years ago when you were started here, did, did you think that you would still be here? or I probably, I know, I never thought it would be that then. Because I was very nervous starting off, but then when I, it, I was always used to ad, admin work, you know, answering phones, meeting people. I was in a veterinary office before I started, and then my boss retired, and he has since passed away. But I loved, I loved meeting the people, talking to the people, and of course I love music. And I used, I started off like like Rebecca, at part time, you know, at the beginning, on a half day Saturday and a half day Sunday, and then. There was a country show every Wednesday night 
and all the country singers, one different country singer came in every Wednesday for this two is hours. My music, was it? Yeah. yeah, wasn't it? So this yeah, is my music. This my it? music. Yeah. yeah, and the presenter, the country, the singer would, you know, present the show, and I took all the calls, and I got to know every one of the country singers, mm-hmm. men and ladies, <laughs> gentlemen and ladies, and they were all so nice, and I just loved it. And then, Joe Yerkes was my boss then, and he asked me to do full day Saturday, full day Sunday. And then I started to come in in the evenings, I think from five o'clock until 10. And then during the recession, the hours naturally were cut back, you know, so I came in then for about two hours at night. I still come in on a Wednesday, Thursday and Friday when I'm not on days. I just love it, you know, I just meeting people. You do a lot on Joe. You literally walked in uh, off the streets. Didn't you? You walked in off the street. <laughs> <laughs> and you asked and you asked to meet Joe Yorkus. I didn't <laughs> And he gave you a job? I came in actually, I applied and they said there was no vacancy. So they said come come for an interview and I went for an interview, which was Martina Midlin actually mm. who interviewed me. And Joe Yorkus was here and I said Hello, Mr. Yerkes. Oh, he said, Nelly, call me, call me Joe. You know, the American accent. Mm. So I did. I couldn't understand any, you know, a boss being called mm. by their, Chris, you know, their name. I would address him as Mr. or Mrs. Always. <laughs> That's where we were brought up, I suppose. Yeah. Oh. So I loved it. Well, he said, oh, he said to Martina, well, he said, we have to get a, a job for this lady. We'll have to fit her in. And they did. I passed the test with flying colours. Yeah. The same man gave me because he and I were, yes. were great friends. That's right. Yeah. And one night we were out and <laughs> uh, ha- having a drink in the, the brewery tap as usual after after the office, and he said to me, I "Must get you on the radio. <laughs> you have a voice for the radio." And I didn't know a voice <laughs> for the radio, and that's where it all came yeah. about. And he didn't know that I wanted to be a DJ. <laughs> he had no idea. I never told anyone, not even my wife. <laughs> Didn't confess. <laughs> and uh, so all of a sudden, I was given this opportunity. And he said, what kind of a show would you like to present? And I outlined the what we would do on uh, Sunday brunch. And my greed and uh, Joe said, OK, let's, let's go and do it. And Albert came up with the title when he saw the playlist that I had outlined uh. And the yeah. mixture, Albert came up with three uh, titles <laughs> for the show. And as soon as I saw Sunday Brunch, I said, that's it. That's, that's the one, the one uh, we'll yeah. go with. Oh, amazing. So, Cole, you've been here 19 years. I think so. You I, think I, so? I actually <laughs> didn't look this up, but it's around that. Kind of did you, um, <clears throat> what slot did you start off? You, you uh, now afternoon, do afternoon. I oh. think it was, yeah. Afternoon, and uh, I did move to drive time. Uh, for a length of time and then back to afternoons again. So it was always in between uh, those hours. Yeah, and Joe Yerkes was in charge when I got here first. And the most unusual thing I found uh, in radio, and since that time, this is still the most unusual for me, having to wear trousers and shoes. Uh, I find that most surreal because it is the entertainment business. And I found that unreal. I do come from an accountancy background, so that's what I did in college and all that but I just didn't like that so I pushed that aside and went into radio which you know I love and that's why I'm kind of doing that since and I like everything about it but I found it weird at the very start wearing trousers and shoes and that What did you normally wear? Uh, <laughs> well not trousers <laughs> like what I mean trousers. slacks yeah. right I mean I slacks you, to, you know well, slacks <laughs> yeah you know slacks is in a suit yeah. right uh, so there was no runners or jeans and that part I found uh, unusual till it changed and that kind of was pushed aside. And that's the only unusual part I ever remember from my whole time. <laughs> I just had a vision of you wanting <laughs> to be sitting there in your pyjama bottoms yeah. or something. Mm, yeah. I looked over to see how you throw a scarf. I know, but look, that kind of thing. I mean, that's a small <laughs> point, but, you know, uh, from the image of radio, you know, that I had in general, I was in one of the radio stations before here, but... Um, it was like, yeah, I don't think you would have gone in in shorts at that time. I mean, like dressy shorts or whatever. It was the, the slacks as in trousers, and, yeah. and, which I rarely wear in real life. So I just found that most unusual. There was a time mm. when we had to wear ties. Shirts, ties, yeah. And yeah. jumpers, yeah. There was a time. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. So you were lucky. <laughs> I just escaped the tie part. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So the dress code has changed. Have you seen any other changes in radio in Midlands 103 over that time? And what are the big ones? Well, I suppose the big ones really for when I started and Ellie started would be down mobile in William phones. Street, yeah, wasn't in it? William Street, we yeah. didn't have mobile yeah. phones. Our mobile phones no, were very, very new, and, and there was no many texts had or anything. It was yeah. all you had to it was be all phones. on the phones, and you were yeah. hopping. The phones were hopping, and we had dial up internet. Yeah, it was dial up oh, internet. So when Nelly was sending a request to the studio, she used to run down the corridor <laughs> yeah, and have it on a piece of paper, and <laughs> off she'd go, leg yeah. it down to the studio and back yeah. up again. Good yeah. exercise. Yeah, the big change. The, the big change I thought was uh, for. for Say the presenters was the mini discs. Oh, we had uh, we had these tiny mini discs. That's but why they're called mini discs. Before your mini discs, do you remember <laughs> the carts, Carl? That was the my time. All right, so there was yeah. ad carts, <clears throat> and basically in the studio, um, your ads were played on a cart, so one ad per cart, which was on kind of reels, and the presenter would have to swap them in and out. So every second one, they'd have to take them. A lot out. of work. To it. A lot of work. A lot of work. <laughs> oh, and yeah. then you progressed to the mini discs. Mm. Like I forgot about that the, the previous one. Yeah, <laughs> I so forgot about that. the news every And we had a printout of yeah. how, how yeah. I went to move it back and forward. And, uh, yeah. uh, whereas now, it's all there in front of yeah. us yeah. and it's, uh, it's so easy. Yeah, and the presenters have so much more time now to do with their content, to interact with their listeners, that they're not worrying about what ads are coming up that's already, already scheduled. Mm. But, um, so technology is a big, uh, for, oh, for, for us, easier, for the presenters, yeah. is, uh, is yeah. a major thing. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, you're concentrating on the things you should be concentrating on. You know, as opposed to all those other things with ads, you know, people don't care you're doing this or that or the other if you were shoving in an ad. They're just waiting for the ad, wait till it's over. Uh, so no, so you can concentrate on the music and you're actually, you know, your chit-chat. You know, so when you're f- busy, you would have been years ago because all this stuff wasn't done uh, for you through technology. You hadn't much time to think of things. Do you know what I mean? So now you have a lot more time, so you should have, uh, you know, better links in between the songs for the make it more interesting for the person you know tuned in because one of the other big changes that you had was the actual studio you were mm. somewhere else before here as well weren't you yeah we were in the man the man in williams the man. so mm. when i joined we were in the middle but when yeah. nelly joined you were at the top floor in the mall. that's right the top floor yeah yeah and then charlie lansborough opened up the, the official yeah. opening and when we moved to yeah, the middle that, floor yeah. and then we moved out to access in 2008 Um, And then, bang, the recession hit then. Luckily, after we moved in (laughs) and we had studios. um, Just one point as well, Vex, just before we moved, uh, when we were in the town and it was the upper floor when I joined Midlands 103, I found it a big challenge not to eat food or drink coffee (laughs) because no matter what entrance you came in, it was... Was a supermax at the front? Yeah. And then yeah. at the <laughs> kitchen, if you go in the back and I'd look, oh, will I get a roller sandwich today? You might already have one. Will I get Will I get coffee? And the way out is the same thing, no yeah. matter what door you went. And the bank was beside uh, you, so you could get your money out. To get yeah, so there was like, all distractions that we don't have now in a business park as much because you're in a car when you pass the, the stuff, you know, so it's a lot yeah. easier now. One of the things that has, uh, I, I was just jotting down the, the names mm-hmm. of people who are still here you know, Rebecca and Nelly are still here from the time I, I joined. <laughs> but then there was Mark Hughes was was here and then had gone and then he came back again. Yeah. And Tony Christie was was uh, uh, w- w- was here also. And the uh, trying to think who else. Before Des Hensey, Lord rest of Well, there was Des Hensey. Uh, Frank Lowbridge. Frank Lowbridge. Mm, yeah. They were great friends of mine. Yeah. I really relied on them in a big way. And the also Big Ed was yeah. another. Yeah. Uh, who I wasn't as friendly with Big Ed as I was <laughs> with Frank and yeah. and Des, yeah. but uh, so, so the people who have you know s- s- still here, Roy, Roy has been here yeah. for a long, long time. I thought Roy was here when I joined, but he says no, is he's maybe about twenty four years. Yeah, we Roy. call him Roy the boy. Yeah. He's no longer Roy the boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's just celebrated quite a big birthday, hasn't he? And he said, you can't call me Roy yeah. the boy anymore. Yeah, he's, yeah Roy he's is a show on that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he do on a show, a show at night, I remember? Yeah, 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 the, yeah the late yeah. show. 10, yeah. 10, yeah. 10 o'clock at night, yeah. The late show, yeah. I remember when I was in, was I in school? He used to do it. He was part-time for a long time. He was, actually, yeah. yeah. Because I definitely remember listening to the late show when I was in school. Yeah. You know, and get my tape recorder ready to record, <laughs> you know, and try and not get them to talk before or after the song, which was impossible. 
Yeah, um, I used to do that as well. Yeah. Always the top 40 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about people now. I've got a bit of a, a tricky question. It might be seen as tricky, but it's not. <laughs> but if there was one person that you've had the pleasure of working with throughout your time at Midlands 103, that just, just the one person that's left something with you, who would that be for you? If anyone's got anyone God. that comes Albert, to mind? I would say. Lord yeah. Preston. It was a pleasure. Now, you miss him, you know, at the weekends. He used to always come in on a Saturday or a Sunday, you know, and he'd have some funny remark, but you would miss that mm. still, you know. And when the door opens, I say, God, maybe that's Albert, you know, you just... It's automatic. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are two people who I associated with and I was friendly with. Well, it was Des Hensley. Yeah, the late yeah. Des Hensley. Yeah. He and I were, 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 were yeah. very close <clears throat> and his death came as a real, a real shock uh, to me. And the second person is Aidan... Barry, oh, no, he, he's an extremely nice guy for a start, and knowledgeable and on technology, and helps me out of a lot of the time. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I come in here, for instance, on a Sunday morning, and I, I don't know what I'm going to be met with. And of course, um, you have to call know, Rebecca. And I'm, oh, yeah. Rebecca. Don't, don't mention Rebecca on <laughs> Sunday morning. A text from me saying, Rebecca, uh, this is wrong. <laughs> 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 And then I then I, I sit back and I see her scrolling over the screen from, <laughs> the from most, Athlone. The <laughs> she's, it's, it's moving away and she's <laughs> she sorts things out just there and then and off I go again. So that's that's a great a great help. <laughs> uh, she must she, she probably hates me. <laughs> but Des, you're not the first and you won't be the last. To ring that, so. <laughs> Sunday mornings. Sunday mornings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sunday nights. <laughs> Breakfast mornings, no. <laughs> but speaking of Des, um, and obviously Joe then, they used yeah. to have, and speaking back in the day, before phones, they always used to have their Elvis special. That's right, on a Saturday morning. On a morning. Saturday morning, yeah. which would happen on Elvis's birthday anniversary and his death yeah. anniversary. There used to be two of them. That's right, yeah. And you'd have four or five people in answer the phones. Uh, All the yeah. phones would light up. You'd have a load of kind of yeah. CDs. And this is when CDs were, I suppose, or a hot kicks. You know, it's very very few people buy CDs these days, but back then it was. Yeah, and the phones were on fire now, they never let yeah. up. Um, but I do no, remember a story about um, Des when he started doing the show with Joe. Did you hear the story? That there was a ticking sound. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a ticking sound on air, and Joe was in the ad break. He goes, Des, do you hear that? <laughs> and you go, what, 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 Des? There's a ticking sound, and I can't find it. <laughs> And then it turns out to be Des as a pacemaker. Yeah. That's oh, and it used to be picked up in the mic. <laughs> it's so um, funny. But yeah, they were hilarious. They were, uh, the, he the played duo. a trick. Des Hensey played a trick on me one time <laughs> that I, 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 I did the big bop quite a few <laughs> times when Joe would be away on yeah. holiday. Yeah. And so I'd be drafted in and he would, he, would, he would always play Obla Dee, Obla Da <laughs> because of the, the, the Desmond and the Barrel in the, <laughs> in the marketplace. And so he always played that. But there was one time I, I, I was actually uh, doing the paneling and talking uh, with, with him at the same time. And how, I don't know how it came about, but he slipped in Je t'aime. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, and here was all of a sudden on the air, me sitting there, Jetem comes up with all the heavy breathing. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I quickly, I quickly got rid of it. I don't know, has Jetem ever been played on no, Midlands it's 103? It's a very long song, I think, too, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It is. Really that was, lengthy, that was yeah. the shortest version yeah. ever. Yeah. I think it was only played in discos at the slow sets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it got cancelled for banned for quite a while in yeah. certain countries isn't it? Did, of course, yeah, I think yeah. definitely in America some uh, some states in America and England I think it got uh, yeah. yeah banned yeah them did. and there's he was a great character he used to go out and he'd lay down at you know at the door when he'd walk out then and the next thing he just caught me by the leg if you <laughs> think well the roar for me you'd hear me in Clara now so <laughs> <laughs> he was unreal <coughs> and, and remember that when I was reading the picture it's one Saturday evening Terry Fahey was, I knew there was something wrong and he was going around and just when I was in the middle of them, didn't he kick the door? Well, you'd hear the noise all over the place and I couldn't, I was just about to laugh and I said, if I laugh, I'd be definitely gone. So I had to cough, you know, just to cover up. <laughs> well, he was gone when I came out. Oh, they bank it for the outrageous kick. Oh, that was in the old radio station. Oh, 
And of course, Mark Hughes was definitely unreal. You could take a, do a whole show about Mark Hughes, oh, Nelly. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Call the any- country music on, at night. Mm. Call anyone for you? Uh, I'm trying to think there as a because it's a great question, and uh, we didn't know about it before this. So <laughs> I'm trying to think as I'm listening to you all, and I haven't got anything that interesting that I can think of. Like I didn't, uh, I've never fallen out with anyone that I've worked with <laughs> here. So uh, and that's I suppose uh, makes you like a place more, you know. Uh, so I've never fallen out with anyone. So there's not there's nobody I can think of that was just that I could mention here now. We said in a previous episode um, when we were talking to a couple of the people up in the office there that it is very much like a dysfunctional family sometimes here. Has it always been like that? I've, I know, Des, you're a little bit different because you're on the weekends, but in, in the weekdays or even on the weekends, has it always been quite a family vibe? Yeah, you think, like family, it's always been, you know, we're like a family and it is because everyone is there for each other. So if there's an idea or someone's looking for help and trying to either fix something or something for on air, like a promotion, everyone will get involved, you know, um, and the door is always open to, you know, there's no one that you can say, OK, I can't approach that one and ask them something. Everyone is fairly open. Yeah. Um, and it is. Yeah, it's, it's always been like that. Yeah, Yes, you'll have your rows, but like like family, they'll be forgotten. Yeah. You know, you just won't give them a cup of tea the next time you see them. That's one thing. That's, <laughs> that, that's one thing that upsets me, uh, Nelly. When any when I finished that show, I came out, and she said, "Oh, Pete brought me in a cake." <laughs> <laughs> I still have to wait or, or for some Aiden Barry, to bring in. Aidan Barry brought me in coffee. <laughs> and, uh, me, I, I, I think once a year I give Nelly a, a bottle of wine at Christmas, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I never bring, what but these guys egg? are these guys are doing it every. I used to all Easter eggs. Oh, Easter eggs. Egg. <laughs> 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 Do you know well, the Easter egg you brought in? The little milk. You know the, the little one. Oh, the, 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 the cream egg. The one is cream egg. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all she deserved. That's it. So, but they they bring in all sorts of things for her and do I feel bad yes no, no. yeah uh, <laughs> uh. no Pete always brings me a bar, a little bar of chocolate and Aidan used to bring me oh it does bring me a bar of chocolate no pressure does yeah no. <laughs> so you think did well, you the shops, the hint does no the shops are not open when I come in here <laughs> yeah. Sunday, right? could be, the coffee could be cold by exactly. time you get here yeah. oh, I'll so. forgive you this <laughs> but I make you the coffee don't I no tea it is now yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, things have changed uh, dramatically, and uh, I think of all the guys who have, I suppose, the nature of the business that people there's a turnover of, of staff, and that's why I, 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 I probably don't know as many even nowadays who are working here as I as I should. But listen, that's, that's because I'm only in here on a Sunday, but. Uh, all, all the people who, who, I, who I started with, yeah, yeah, yes. I, I, I won't go through all the names because I'll probably forget those, but they move on to other radio stations or they retire altogether from radio. And it's, it's a, I suppose it's a job that not too many people like say that Carol, uh, yeah. you know, for all that, all those years, that's, that's quite, that's quite something here, five, five Five you have a, a lovely week. slot, Carol. Yeah, well, look, to, to it's, be. it's a lovely one. Bear in mind, right, as Becca says, you know, the doors are always open to talk. Mm-hmm. Or if I, I don't think I've had an argument with anyone since I started in Midlands 103, and I'm not just saying this because we're on a podcast. Uh, and, and I suppose that's partly due as well to the fact that, uh, you know, I'm show and go. So I do the show and I go. Like, I don't work here after that doing something else. Uh, so I concentrate on the show and there's no reason for me to be upset there's no reason for me to be cross or anything. So, uh, you know, hopefully I sound happy most of the time because there's no reason why I shouldn't. So I, I can concentrate on the show. I don't have to concentrate on other things that I have to do after before, other than my own personal life where I have to make a few quid as well. But, you know, uh, so for me, uh, it's it's been very enjoyable from day one. There's been nothing wrong ever. And, you know, I try and do every show. I said this to someone. Uh, before, because <laughs> someday it might be right, but I try and do every show like it's my last show, because 
you know, it's easy to get lackadaisical. And when you're on five days and you're on a, a lot of time like that. So I do jizz myself up as much as I can and think, you know, this is my last show, last link as well. So and try and not have lazy links where there's a lot of presenters like that. I might get away with that, you know, here and there. Not forever, but, you know, that was, this is type of a link for a song, which is nothing anyone could do. So that's for me, I suppose, I can concentrate in the show. I'm not distracted in any way. So I've only myself to blame if it's bad, <laughs> you know. And it never is. Never. Ah, thanks. Well, <laughs> I think it's important to be yourself also. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember a lady saying to me years ago, you're the exact same on the air as you are off air. You have a very sexy yeah. voice. Whoa! No, <laughs> <laughs> very sexy voice. I said that. Oh, Nelly's filtering cars. all these calls. <laughs> oh. But it's, uh, it's, 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 I thought I took that as a compliment that uh, I'm the same guy off yeah. air as, as on air. So whether that's good or yeah. bad, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know about the sexy voice. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I've heard that as well, Nelly. Yeah, I yeah, bet you yeah, did. No. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, well, you yeah. did, Rebecca. Yeah. yeah, your wife said mm. it as well. <laughs> 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 don't tell Barbara because <laughs> obviously you've all kind of come into radio and I think a lot of people you either come into radio because you love it and you've wanted to be in radio since you were you know going through the motions with school and things like that or you come in and then you get the bug what do you think it is about how, how sorry that's the wrong question what do you think the best advice is for someone that's coming in and wanting to work in a radio station or once they get in what's a good way for them to stay or grow at a radio station I suppose it I suppose radio a lot of people when we find it I suppose Carol you probably when children or students come in on work experience from mm. college oh yeah we'd have them in the studio yeah, for a while a lot of the time they'll come in and we'll have the perception of there's someone on the radio so Carol's presenting and someone reading the news and someone answering the phones and that's it that's it nothing else and they don't they don't expect anything else yeah. but then there's a whole background to the radio station that they're so not aware of there's the accounts there's the traffic who schedule the ads there's the researchers there's the Massive operations sales team. there's the sales yeah. team yeah. so there's all these other areas so you know and when you come into radio you know you know Sarah it's not just one job you just yeah. don't come in and answer the phones you come in and you could be on air or you could be doing a, an ad or no that ha- hasn't happened yet but I've never been asked to read the news so there's obviously <laughs> no one's been out that sick that day and speaking of that first, Rebecca, a lot of the first time Rebecca yeah. <laughs> yeah a lot of people's perception of the news is that you get handed the news and you read it mm. and you wait till the next news yeah they don't realise that you have to work all day getting those stories they think it's just read that's yeah. what people That's think yeah, about the news. Yeah. They don't realise. Yeah. But there's so much, and what <clears throat> you may start off in radio may not be where you end up. 100%. You know, because everyone is given the opportunity to try everything, you know, and whatever you excel at or whatever you end up doing, then obviously, as long as you love it. And you will, when you're in radio, you're not going to, it is something. No two days are the same. You can't come in and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do, nine o'clock on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Because it will always, it'll always switch. It's yeah. always something different. <laughs> yeah, it's not a sexy thing in the sense that you've got to be disciplined. Mm, uh, yeah. You know, people think it is g- great fun and so forth. But you know, behind presenters like myself and Carol, there is a whole team, as you say, Rebecca. Yeah. That uh, mm. uh, if, if they didn't do their job, then we would be in terrible trouble. We wouldn't be on. Yeah. We wouldn't be on. Yeah. So it makes it it, it makes it easy for for us. But people coming in, they uh, first of all they've got to get on with other people. That's 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 mm. number one f- with me. They they have to be uh, likable people, mm. and and like other people, and they've got to be disciplined. They've got to realize that they may have to be in here at half past six mm. in the morning or six o'clock in the morning or whatever. All sorts of hours of the day, antisocial hours, and be prepared to do that. I make the I make the the joke against myself and say, "Well, there's nobody else who won't get up at, at the, <laughs> the Sunday morning. I'm in here, so I'm luck, I'm lucky that yeah. way." But it, it, it is it's a discipline. It's not as sexy as people yeah. may yeah. think it is. Especially with the mornings, with poor Peter who has mm. to get up at five thirty in the morning yeah. to 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 get in on air and on you know six six thirty. There is a lot that that does go into it. 
But just one final question before we, we say goodbye to all you lovely people. Um, if you could have, what's the one memory oh, from the whole years you've been here, the, the one memory that makes you just go, I love this job? You can have time Gosh. to think, don't worry. I know, I didn't put this one. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's well, so there's many loads of memories. Like, memories. Yeah, there's loads of times where you think, okay, the time of the beast of the east, where the big snow. Oh, yeah. And um, there were many snow occasions where people went out, the MDs at the time went out and picked, you got Albert, picked up in your yeah, house. Albert came out. Albert went out in the Jeep and he picked up Raddick and Roy. and Yeah. yeah. Did he pick you, you up? Her? There's a time. It, yeah. it, oh, did you get then the, there was the, the ploughing with the, plowing, the storm when yeah. it was closed down because I live across from there now the last number of years, the ploughing in, in Mucklands, Craig. Um, you got the motorbike it was, yeah so basically <laughs> what happened was the ploughing was cancelled at around 10 half 10 I think in the mm. particular morning so I was on air at 12 but you couldn't get out of the ploughing everyone was coming out at once now I could walk to the ploughing but I had to go back and get my car but I couldn't get out of where I lived it was impossible um, so I tried to get out of my car so what I did is I pulled it in at Kelly's pub in Muckler, which is straight across from one entrance and Albert says I'll pick you up on the motorbike because I'll get by the traffic <laughs> so I was never really on motorbikes in my life because I'm not into them and uh, I said go handy Albert and he just collected me and gave me a helmet and we went in and I'll be honest with you now he went fairly fast <laughs> <laughs> not saying he broke any rules or whatever but for me I was a little nervous going around bends and stuff I was happy when he pulled up out to the radio station and let me off so I got in about half twelve uh, I think it was Will kept the show go kept the show going until mm. then, and I, you know, got in there then. But I'll always remember the motorbike trip into work when we should have been at the ploughing, and uh, it was just funny. I'll always remember. Yeah. That's five years ago, isn't it? It's about that. Yeah, there's yeah. time Will got stuck up the mountain in the snow. We had to be rescued by uh, the civil defence. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Well, please tell us that so, story. <laughs> so obviously it was really heavy snow, and our transmission is up to Sleep Blue Mountains. And on this occasion, the power went, the generator failed. So Will took off in the Jeep to go up to Manily, restart it. And uh, he got stuck twice, I think. He kind of just slid off because it was obviously up a mountain road. And the civil defence came down and, and rescued him. And I think eventually, I think John Cusack came up in his tractor <laughs> and brought him up to the site to refill with diesel and to get us back on air. But, um, but there's loads of those stories. Yeah. Kind of. Oh, well. Great memories, aren't they? That's it. That's it. No, and, and it's all it's all fun that we can laugh about them now. <laughs> <laughs> and if you couldn't get it, I just remember when we were broadcasting one day uh, when we were in the centre of town and I just looked out the window in the middle of the show and I went like, that wouldn't inspire you for the next link. I looked by and there was a circus promoting <laughs> itself and I was doing a parade through the town. And as far as I know, unless my memory's let me down, there was, was an elephant. elephant. Yeah, I do remember that. So, yeah. so, and I was going, yeah. am I seeing things? I took yeah. another sip of map? water. Yeah, yeah I took yeah, a sip yeah, of water. Yeah, yeah. Am I seeing <laughs> things? Yeah. It was an elephant that operated me. So that would inspire you for, you know, a link in the radio. You'd rarely see that during the day anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, an elephant walking down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nelly the elephant. Yeah, <laughs> Nelly was there as well. Yeah. I've always been tempted to play that song, <laughs> yeah. but never did. In case my, my coffee didn't appear. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. I, I would. I just didn't make the coffee. But then of course COVID then hit. And I don't know if anyone's mentioned COVID, but obviously the radio stations had to yeah. adapt everywhere um, for COVID. Uh, Work from home. Carl yeah. set up the studio at home. Carl which is mad. To, yeah, that's it. Carl had to do the show. Everything himself. It was mad, and just made one requirement of good broadband. Uh, yeah. You know, to deliver your voice, but you're setting up a studio at home. It's easy to get distracted. There's one clip of people might have heard yeah. it back then where my dog started barking in the middle of the show because <laughs> he sat in the studio, the room I converted <laughs> to the studio with me. And uh, because the doorbell rang when I was doing a link and the doorbell sets the dog off and he just went crazy. And it was funny. And I just said, hang on a second. And I just said, Teddy, you'll have to go out. And I came back. But it was funny radio. But that was the reality of broadcasting from home. But it did get confusing when you're broadcasting from home because yeah. you end up going in on the wrong day like it was Sunday. Opening the door going in. Oh, no, I'm not on today. It's very confusing. Like. But it was. It was very strange because obviously we all had to adapt. And yeah. when you think about it, it's all very surreal. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I had to stay at home every yeah. Saturday yeah. Sunday and it went so hard on me. Oh, my That's God. It. We yeah. barely yeah. made it through, yeah. Nelly. Very fierce yeah. upset over, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pre-recorded the show for, uh, I think, four That's weeks, right. four yeah. or five weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, here again, it was Aidan Barry. Yeah. He managed to get all the equipment together. Yeah. And we sat in my uh, kitchen at home and we, I had selected the music I was playing and... 
he then recorded my voice and then that brought in the music and then it took you know hours and hours to do yeah. this every every week that's and commitment mm. yeah. you know that's you know kind of that because you wanted to get that out to your listeners because you knew they were in they were they were stuck at home as yeah, well yeah of course yeah mm. and you want to keep some sort of familiarity and continuity and yeah, you know familiarness you know yeah. for them yeah. <laughs> the thing, <laughs> the, like the that, thing yeah. that always gets me uh, about this when my my kind of uh, is it my favorite mem- memories or what are when people come up and say I listen to you every Sunday morning mm. yeah and that's great yeah uh, and that's not an egotistical thing yeah it's just that you know that there, there are people you're making, they're genuine yeah. Yeah. and you're making a difference listening. yeah because like Nelly yeah. will you know the people will ring um yeah. and we'll be ringing for a request or be ringing yeah. for a chat. But we may be the only people that they, they all, talk yeah, to exactly. all day. Yeah. All day, you know. Um, so you give them the time yeah. and you have the chat with them. And then, you know, well, you're happy. That makes happy. their day. That makes their day. Really. And at least, you know, if I've done nothing else today. No, and you're yeah. happy. Yeah. You know, at least this person has spoken to someone. You know, and you know, that's that makes a big difference. Yeah, and especially through COVID with that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Because there were people that didn't have anyone. Yeah. Um, and radio really did do a, a service then. As well, I, I know, Des, you said it was. It, it took a long yeah. time to put your show together, but that show to some people, as you said at the beginning of the podcast, that, you know, you're, you're their person on the Sunday morning, mm-hmm. on Sunday brunch. So it's a lot of effort, but you, yeah. you put it together for, for the listeners. Yeah. And on the other side, though, if you take a day off, Des, <laughs> you know, Nelly gets all these phone calls. Where is Des? Yeah. yeah. You know, so <laughs> you haven't put in for the holiday request to your listeners. Bring them back. You need to kind of, prom- yeah. you know, kind of. Where are yeah. you? That That's reminds me, I'm, I'm out of ho- holidays. <laughs> yeah. Moving yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> swiftly on. <laughs> I do find that quite funny sometimes when people are on holiday. Um, I remember the last time Will was on holiday, I got a few messages through on, on Facebook and in a couple of places. Where's Will? Where's, yeah. Where is he? Like worried? It's like, oh no, no, he's just taking a well-deserved yeah, break. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I think people get used to listening yeah, exactly. to people every day, every Sunday, yeah. every every afternoon. You know, so well, it's, it's, it's just like that. That lady, all those years ago, said, no, "You're yeah. my companion." No, yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. you're you're the guest in the yeah. house, mm. and never forget that. Yeah, and they all said they're listening. To have you in the bedroom with them. Oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, that's a different no. show, Nelly. That's a different I mean, show. Is, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's for a different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're not in the bedroom with them. I know you're here. <laughs> oh, oh, guys. Carl's end with his no trousers or shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that came across wrong. Sorry. Sure, no, we had the trousers on. Yeah. We've learned. We've learned so much that in this. Funny. Before we go today, has any of you got anything else you want to say about working in Midlands 103 over the years? When I started doing the obituaries, that was I remember one Saturday, there was no one in the newsroom. There used to be in, do you remember mm. one time in us? And Albert said, you have to read the obit- obituaries today. I said, Albert, I won't. I, you know, <laughs> wouldn't be able. I'd be terribly nervous. Oh, I went through them and I got it. Well, I shook. I, I mean, everyone knew that, you know, that I was fierce nervous. Yeah. And I remember Michael Fox, he was a counsellor, and he rang me up after the show and he said, do you know now what you were going to do, Nelly? He said, you sit in front of that mic and just say, there's no one out there listening to you, just yourself. Mm. And, you know, I, I got that into my head mm. for a while and I got real used to it. Yeah, with Nelly, like oh, anyone knows Nelly, it's always, yeah. Nelly's always laughing. Yeah. Nelly's always in great form. And that's the only time. And that's I'm, the only time Nelly yeah, will be serious, yeah, serious yeah. is when she's reading the obituaries because obviously... Those obituaries are extremely important oh, to the yeah, families. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you make a mistake, you know, you have to be it, so yeah. careful with the dates and everything, yeah. you know. But yeah, that's the only time you'll hear Nelly now really serious. Yes, yeah, <laughs> the only time. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a privilege to be on radio. And I know we get paid for it, but it's still it's a privilege that you're there and you're in people's houses. And it's important then for presenters like Carol and myself uh, to be aware of that and to prepare as much as we possibly can for a show and um, and try and make it as entertaining as possible for for the listener so that they'll tune in yeah but the listeners next, from next american time. australian yeah. no not yeah. Over. yeah that's Germany, it. it's great when you see people away on holidays too you know they yeah. can be in santa panza or grand canaria lanzarote and they go listening by the pool 
you know, and it's a fanciful yeah. picture you paint in your own head. Uh, the listener tuned into that. Oh, I wish I was away on holidays. But it's great that they took the time to tune in mm-hmm. on their phone, yeah. which technology lends yeah. you the opportunity to do exactly. now. But just to follow on with Des saying, it's, you know, it's a privilege to be on air, on air. And that's, you know, fanciful talk. But it's true in that I said this to Roy a few weeks ago. Uh, there's very few opportunities for on-air presenters because there is only so many slots on any radio mm-hmm. station. So like this with the so few. So it's a privilege to be on air because not many ever get to be yeah. on air. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And just going back to people listening all over the place, um, I have the privilege sometimes to have a look at the digital listening views. Oh. And we have seven to ten different countries that tune in oh, on, on a mm-hmm. on a often basis, on a very often basis. So that's the thing. You, yes, we're Leash, Westmeath, and Offaly, but we're actually our much locals are yeah. further afield, yeah. and it's and especially on match days. Big yeah, match days, you'll see all those spikes from people in Spain, Australia, in Australia, yeah. Yeah. everywhere like that'll tune in because local radio is still local. Yeah, you know, yeah. so people, no matter where you are in the world, you still want to know what's yeah. happening in Ballycumber or in Mountmelic or you're in Athlone. You still yeah. you still want to know the news. Yeah, and I think that's one important thing, isn't it, about Midlands, really, is, is that we are, I know I'm an English person saying this, <laughs> but, but it is a very local radio station, and it's for the local, it's for local people. Yeah, I think so. And we do accept people from Scotland. And yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> As Brits. <laughs> and even Mayo. And even Mayo. Mayo. As far as even as Mayo. It's a whole different continent. That is. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for joining us uh, for this episode, guys. We have been listening to Rebecca, Nelly, Des and Carl. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Join Let's us next around. time when we'll be talking all about sports on Midlands 103. Talk to you then. Thank you.